Hey everybody, Dr. Patel here. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Sorry guys about the delay today. Hope you are all doing well. Today we're gonna be talking about knee anatomy. Um, so we're switching gears this month. Um, for the last month or two, we've been focused on the lumbar spine or the low back, um, which I think is really, really important um, because number one, a lot of people have back pain, right? But number two, um, because the back is actually involved with a lot of things that go on with the lower limbs as well. So as we mentioned over the last couple months, um, you know, nerve irritation and things going on in the low back can actually influence the way that we walk um, and can cause us to have pain or issues in other joints as well. One of the most common joints um, other than the low back where we have issues that go on, particularly as we get older, but in general, um, is our knees. Um, there are a lot of folks out there that might be tuning in um, that might have been told that they have knee arthritis um, or that they need a knee replacement. Um, over the course of this next month, we're gonna be going over various different topics as, such as what is arthritis, um, when and why would we or would we not want to do surgery like an arthroscopic surgery or a knee replacement and beyond the degenerative joint disease which is osteoarthritis or arthritis um, I'll also be going over uh, things such as um, you know ACL tears MCL tears patellar tendon issues meniscus tears um, you know what are these various different things um, mean um, if you were told that you had an injury that caused a tear in a particular area um, what is it why is it or is it not important when is surgery necessary when can we avoid it um, when we when can we avoid surgery and what are all the other treatment options that are available but before we get into you know what can go wrong in the knee first we have to understand what is going on in the knee in the first place um, so, you know, there, when we talk about the knee joint, um, there are a lot of different things that are involved in the knee. And, and you can see, and this picture here is just an x-ray of the knee joint. Um, and you can see a lot of different um, arrows and words talking about different parts of the anatomy. And, and I'm going to go over the anatomy a little bit more in depth. But first and foremost, um, I kind of want to just show you some stuff on a model um, and draw some stuff out here um, so i'm going to go over some anatomy here and you're going to have to forgive me because i'm going to draw it because that's the way that i like to learn these things so when we talk about the knee joint here um, we when we're looking straight at the joint you have your femur right which is your thigh bone you have your tibia. And when we're looking straight at the joint um, from the front, this is the femur on the right side of the right knee. So this is the right side of the knee. This is the left side of the knee. And we're looking straight front to back right here. So this is the femur. This is the tibia. And this is the fibula. Okay. So this joint is a hinged joint where the thigh bone meets the lower leg bone and when you look at the joint um, it moves like this okay um, but there are motions in different directions and we're going to go over what those motions mean now there's one other very important bone in that that's inside uh, the knee joint as well and that's called the patella or the kneecap and that sits in the front of the knee like so and it actually sits in this nice little groove that is in the femur here. And this nice little groove is like right here. Okay. And that is where the kneecap sits. And you can see that on the model right here. So this U-shaped groove is actually where the kneecap sits. And the kneecap is connected to the thigh muscles. The thigh muscles called the quadriceps muscles are what attach onto the kneecap there. And those tendons, those, those muscles attach with what's called the quadriceps tendon. 
which is the tendon that sits right here. Tendon is what attaches muscle to bone. Okay, so here's your quadriceps muscle attaching via a tendon there. And that tendon then continues on. It wraps over the kneecap here and then continues on down to the lower leg bone called the tibia in what's called the patellar tendon. Okay, And this whole contraption in the front of the joint is what's in charge of straightening out the knee when we're sitting or when we're walking, right? This whole contraption actually straightens out the knee. And this kneecap sits in this nice little groove. That's actually really important because the way that that kneecap glides or moves helps to dictate how your, your knee is moving in space. And that kneecap can start gliding improperly as we get older for various different reasons. And there's a lot of things that can, can cause pain in the front of the knee that's associated with that kneecap. Um, now, there are other structures that are in here as well. Um, on the outside and inside of the knee, so on the right side of the knee and on the left side of the knee, we have these ligament structures. So on the right side of the knee, we have your lateral collateral ligament. And on the inside or left side of the right knee, you have your medial collateral ligament. Okay. And these ligament structures are actually, you know, you've, if you've tuned in in the past with me, the way that I describe the ligament structures, um, you know, some people call them the duct tape that connects bone to bone. But the way I describe it is that those are the thick rubber bands that surround broccoli in the grocery store, right? They're strong, they're supportive, but there's a little bit of a stretch to them. And these ligaments, the medial collateral ligament on the inside part of the knee and the lateral collateral ligament on the outside part of the knee, those ligaments are in charge of keeping stability from side to side, okay? So if our knee is getting knock kneed or going inwards, then you can see that the medial collateral ligament ends up getting stretched. If our knee is going outwards or bowing outwards, like you're bow-legged, then the lateral collateral ligament is getting stretched. And we'll go into, over time, as we get older, what happens to these ligaments, um, etc. Now, in addition to these ligaments, we have some other ligaments um, that are deep inside the knee um, so if you remove out the patellar tendon here, deep inside the knee, you have these two strong ligaments, one that goes in this direction here, and then one that goes in this direction behind it. And these are the ACL and the PCL behind it. Okay. The ACL is the thick ligament and in deep inside the knee that you may be familiar with because football players and other athletes very commonly injure that ACL. But in reality, that ACL can get degenerated or injured if we're not walking properly, if we're not moving properly in general. Um, and you can see that ACL deep inside here. That ACL and PCL both are in charge of rotational stability. The ACL particularly is helpful in stability in terms of your knee bowing inwards as well. And we'll talk about how that ACL can get injured, even in the absence of a particular um, you know, trauma. There are ways that that ACL can be injured without trauma, and we'll go through all of those details as well. Okay. Um, and then the final thing that I want to point out is, you know, in addition to these ligament structures that provide stability, um, and there are various other ligaments that I'll go through um, as well, um, but we also have these shock absorbers, um, these ring-shaped shock absorbers that, for, that are sit in between the thigh bone, the femur, and the lower leg bone, the tibia here. And these ring-shaped structures are called the meniscus. Um, the medial meniscus sits on the inside or right side, sorry, left side of the right knee. 
and the lateral meniscus sits on the right side of the knee. And those guys are ring-shaped structures that actually sit right here. Okay. And we're, you know, we're a three-dimensional picture here, so it's not going to look exactly like a ring. But those are the, the medial meniscus right here and the lateral meniscus right here. And you can see that these act as shock absorbers on the inside and outside of the knee. These shock absorbers are like the shocks in your car, right? Um, so over time, as we get older, we tend to have a little bit of degeneration that occurs inside these menisci. Um, the meniscus starts to get some level of degeneration as we get older, um, but that does not necessarily equal pain. It's very common for us to have uh, degeneration of these meniscus and have no pain associated with it. I don't know what I'm doing there. I think I'm just uh, adding some shadow or something to show the deep part of the meniscus there. Okay. Now the final thing that I want to point out is what's called the cartilage. The cartilage is the smooth surface of the joint that allows for nice smooth movement. And we have this cartilage that sits on the femur um, where the femur comes and meets the tibia we have this cartilage sitting um, at underneath the kneecap um, where the kneecap interfaces with the femur. We have this cartilage sitting on the tibia on either side. You know, all of these areas where bone um, uh, is, is coming in contact with other surfaces, um, that is covered by cartilage. And that articular cartilage is the smooth surface of the bone that allows for a nice smooth movement. The kneecap has it, the femur has it, the tibia has it, okay? And when we hear things like that your cartilage is decreasing, that is some wear and tear or degeneration of the joint that normally occurs as we get older. Okay. Now, I, I, I want to point out that there's a lot of other things that are in the anatomy of the knee that are not in this model so far, but these are the main things that most people talk about when we talk about uh, knee anatomy, right? So just to recap, this is your femur, your thigh bone, your lower leg bone, the tibia, its partner, the fibula, the kneecap, the patella that sits in the front. You have your quadriceps or thigh muscle that comes and attaches onto the kneecap and continues on as the patellar tendon all the way down to the lower leg bone. You have your medial collateral ligament and your lateral collateral ligament, which are the, the supportive ligaments on the inside and outside of the knee that allow for support when we're going from side to side motions. There's your ACL and your PCL deep inside the knee that provide rotational support and again support from the side to side movement and then you have your your medial meniscus and your lateral meniscus which are the shock absorbers that protect the joint just like the shocks in our car and finally the cartilage the smooth surface of the joint that allows for nice smooth movement um, there are a few other things that i want to mention um, there are other ligaments really all over the knee um, connecting the kneecap to the femur, there's what's called, oh, sorry about that. There's what's called the medial patellofemoral ligament. There's a lateral patellofemoral ligament. Um, there is a ligament that was recently discovered as, as recently as five or six years ago uh, called the anterolateral ligament that comes across here. Um, and there's a capsule that surrounds the whole joint Think of the capsule, um, think of ligaments like these as thickenings of the capsule, but essentially we have this capsule that surrounds this whole joint. Um, and this is a capsule that I kind of describe as a um, balloon that, 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 that encapsulates the whole uh, joint. And there's a little bit of fluid that sits inside this balloon because that's what allows for nice fluid movement of the joint because that liquid uh, provides some lubrication to the joint. Um, but this capsule is what fills with fluid when we have inflammation. 
when we have inflammation, the whole capsule, the whole balloon fills up with fluid. And that, that's what one of the things that can allow for decreased range of motion through the area. There are other uh, muscles and tendons that we need to consider. Um, connecting to the fibula here, um, there is uh, the hamstring uh, tendons that connect over here. There are hamstrings um, are the muscles in the back of the thigh um, that, that actually um, uh, are in charge of bending the knee, right? The quadriceps or thigh muscles um, in the front of the thigh are in charge of straightening the knee. The hamstring muscles in the back of the thigh are in charge of bending the knee. And there are some tendons that attach called the biceps uh, that attach over onto the fibula. And then there's some parts of the hamstring tendons that actually attach all the way over here. And these are called the pes anserine um, tendons that attach down at the bottom inside of the knee here. Um, there are various other different muscle tendons. There's a little muscle called the popliteus that sits on the outside of the knee and wraps around to the back of the knee. Um, and that guy's in charge of locking, unlocking the knee, and it's oftentimes a component of pain when we feel things on the outside of the knee. Um, and then there's this big uh, tendon structure called the iliotibial band. The iliotibial band, or IT band, um, is a long tendon structure that actually starts on the tibia here. There, let me fix this a little bit. It starts on the tibia here and actually goes all the way up the thigh um, and connects to the muscles of the buttock in front of the hip. And this tendon, really, really important tendon, um, is in, it not only connects with the, the thigh, uh, sorry, with the tibia or the lower leg bone, but it actually has fibers that connect with the kneecap and it has fibers that connect with the, the fibula here. So it's a web of tissue or fascia that connects the iliotibial band all the way up to the outside of the butt and back of the butt. Um, so a lot of different structures that are going on inside uh, the knee. Um, and you can see that as I keep on drawing things on top of it, it's starting to get messier and messier here, right? Um, because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And this is just really, quite frankly, this is just looking at the front of the knee, right? There's a lot of things that we can visualize on the back sides of the knee as well. But you can imagine um, that it ends up being so important when we have knee pain going on um, that, that not only do we want to identify the thing that is causing the pain, right? The pain generator. But when we look at this, we have to also recognize that there's a lot of different structures here. Um, and if we have pain on the inside of our knee, um, and depending on what it is that is the pain generator, there might be other things going on in other parts of the knee, or even all the way up to the thigh or all the way up to the hip that are contributing biomechanically to the thing that's going on on the inside of the knee. So a really important concept to think about and um, one that I'm gonna illustrate here a little bit with a, an old lecture that I gave previously. So let me see here. I'm gonna try to uh, present this and let's see if it shows well. So this is just a list of uh, let's see if I can zoom this out. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this, but let's try. So this is an example of a knee joint. Um, and we can kind of see, um, you know, again, we're looking at the right knee here. So we see the LCL here, the MCL here, you have your ACL and your PCL behind it. You have the meniscus on either side, the cartilage, the kneecap, the femur, the tibia, the fibula. Right? We went over this anatomy already. Now, 
depending on the position of what's going on, different things can get stretched, different things can get irritated. So let's take a look at what that might look like. If our knee is bowing outwards, for example, right? We saw the neutral knee and now we're seeing it bow outwards like this. That you could see that the LCL here is getting stretched. That you could see that as the knee bows outwards, there's less pressure on the outside of the knee, but there's more pressure on the inside of the knee. So this type of bowing outwards can cause potentially a stretch injury of the LCL, but it could also cause a compression injury of the medial meniscus or the inside. Now, similarly but different, right? If your knee bows inwards or goes knock kneed position, the LCL over here can, sorry, the MCL over here can get stretched and the lateral meniscus on the outside can then get pulled. So there's a lot of different things that can occur depending on the position of the knee. So it ends up being really important not only to understand the anatomy, but to also understand, all right, what are the mechanics of what's going on? What's the mechanism of your injury? Is this an arthritis picture in which we're bowing to one side or the other and causing pressure on one side or the other? Or was this an injury that took place that actually caused us to have stretch or compression of certain structures? Um, ends up being really, really important for us to take a step back and look at, all right, what are all the different potential pain generators? And then functionally, what can be going on in that region, right? And that's really looking at what's called the functional unit. And when we look at the anatomy, there's so many different, different things. Um, and quite frankly, so many different things in the front of the joint, the inside, outside, and back of the joint that we can look at on x-ray, MRI, ultrasound, um, and on physical examination to really determine what are all the different things that are involved with the functional unit. Um, and only by looking at not only the functional unit of the knee, but also looking at the mechanics of how we're moving throughout our body, right? What's going on in the hip, what's going on in the ankle and the foot um, that could be contributing to what's going on in the knee. And that's the only way we can get long-term results.